Uh, this morning, I want to take uh, a, a few moments just to talk to us about community. There is that sense of being one unit because of shared interest. And in our case, uh, we are coming together as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have a common faith. We are submitted to Jesus Christ. And that becomes our common touch point. Uh, the reason why we are a church community. So our common interest, so to speak, is our faith in Jesus. We have a common faith. We have a common purpose to which we are called. And so we need to grow together as a community. Now, a community is basically a people uh, who share common interests. And therefore, uh, they form a unit. They are, there's a sense of togetherness uh, because of some common interests. And real community actually begins to happen. When you make a choice in your heart that APC or this local church is your church, family. Family means there's a sense of belonging. Uh, there is a sense of commitment. Uh, there is relationships that are being built. And you begin to see yourself as a son or daughter in the family or a father or mother in the family. Uh, there is just relation, meaningful relationships that are being established. And, 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 and there's a sense of belonging. There's a sense of caring that takes place amongst us as a community. And that's the ideal. That's where we want everyone to be. And then you begin to invest in each other. You begin to share with each other. You begin to be a part of the family journey because we are not stagnant. We are going somewhere. We have a vision. We want to become something. We want to achieve something for the cause of God's kingdom. And so you become part of that and you're journeying together with the church family as we progress in the call and the assignment that God has for us. What are some of the descriptors of a Bible community of people who have come together because of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When we say church community, three descriptors, especially for us as a believer, community of believers. Number one, we want to talk about unity. Secondly, fellowship. And third, power. The first one, unity. If there is no unity, they, we, we can't call ourselves a community. When we say unity, we're talking about the fact that we are together. And we need to guard that. We need to protect that. Because if anything disturbs unity, it disturbs us as a community. The second descriptor of our church community is that we want to be a people where there is fellowship. The, this is an important word in the New Testament. The Greek word koinonia. Many, many of you know that word. It simply means to share, to have things in common, uh, to do things together. That's fellowship. It means sharing. In our, in our context, also, we share, we engage with one another in doing things together. And uh, some of the ways that we, uh, we do this, and I'll just mention these three, is one is in life groups, which means that in small settings, you get together and uh, uh, you... Talk about the word. This fellowship is spiritual. It's primarily spiritual in nature. Meaning you're talking about word. You're praying. You're worshiping together. And of course you share in food and so on. And, 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 and those other things. So uh, there is that sense of doing life together. Of being together. Of journeying together. So life group is a very important thing. The point of power. Power should be an important descriptor of us as a church family. Otherwise all we become is another social club. God at work amongst us. The power of God must be so evident amongst us. In, in our homes, and when we come together in worship, when we go out as a people to minister, the power of God, that's what differentiate, differentiates us from the rest, other communities that, that meet all over our city or, or, or in other places. And I'll just reference two, verses, two passages and I'll close here. Acts 4, 32 to 33. Look at the early church. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. That's being of one accord. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. That's fellowship. And what do we see next? Verse 33. And with great power. So that's the third thing. The third descriptor of this early church community. So there is one accord. There is fellowship. And there is also power. 